Real life street stars, man. It's a real situation in here, man. I got a legend in here, man. Our truth, man. Ron Killings, man. The best of both worlds you live in right now, man. The best of both worlds. Man, bro, it's almost like surreal, dog. I'm telling you, man. I mean, when people say like the phrase "living the dream," I am living the dream, dog. Living the. I am a proof of living the dream. Man, we're going to go all the way through the man. First and foremost, man, for those that are deaf, done stupid, been living under several rocks, ain't seen no kind of wrestling magic. Nah. Go ahead and tell them, tell them, reintroduce yourself and tell them where you're from. My name is Ron Killings, a.k.a. WWE Superstar R Truth. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I've Shout been doing this umpteen years. Umpteen. If you don't know, now you know. Man, to have a, to have a name like literally is Ron Killings. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, did, did, when you were young, he's like, I'm going to be great. Like, I'm going to be some, I'm going to be great, I'm going to be great, I'm going to be in jail. God damn. I, I really, I, I thought that maybe, but I, it didn't really, like, catch on to, like, teachers or certain people was like, um, wow, that's a, that's a great last name you got there. And I'm like, what's going on, Killings? Wow, you don't do any of those, do you? I've gotten everything from that last name, man. So I'm like, ah, oh. actually, my sister, man, um, she had asked me, she passed, but she asked me, um, she told me to research our name and see where it comes from. And... Bro, it's like crazy. My great, 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 great granddad is this white guy with whiskers that go around like that. Oh, that's yeah, so it's, that's deep. That's a whole different conversation. Wow. But um, I remember, man, when I got into the business um, and I got signed to WWE, Vince wanted to use Ron Killings. But um, it was like fans would make signs of kill, killings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you feel me? Yeah. So it was like bittersweet kind of like. Yeah. But, hey, now I'm bringing it to you. Man, now, I want you to set the stage because before you were wrestling, and we're going to definitely touch on that, you were rapping, right? Yes. And uh, one of the things that you referenced is the Jack the Rap, was it Jack the Rapper Jack conference? Jack the Rapper conventions, man. Conventions. I want you to set the stage. What, what were those conventions like? Because, you you know, from those conventions, you got pictures with Tupac, Eazy-E. What, what was that like, you know what I'm saying, for somebody that, that had never been to that? Bro, it was like... Um Imagine going to a convention that has all the major record labels, a &Rs there. And they're sitting there, and one by one, or however many you got, we got Sony over here, RCA over there, Def Jam over here. They got so many reps. You go to a table, and they play and listen to your music. That's just how lit that was. So, like, you could play your music right then and there and get feedback? Right there on the spot. Get a deal. Oh, shit. You get a deal, my dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, moving on up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Georgia and Wheezy deal. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. So um, going there was like, that was how you did it. You got your demo tape. You got a good uh, package together, good kit, a couple of uh, demo pitches, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You go up there, and you pass your shit out. And a lot of people got deals from there, man. A lot of people this got deals from there. Man, now you got to tell me, what was your strategy for your demo tape going into the conference, bro? Going where to, to, to the, the conference? Rapper? Like, what, what was your demo tape like? What Dog, would you put um my music was like, almost like, I had some hammer type shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was going up there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. Like, yeah. <laughs> get it. Get it I had a couple of hard stuff, but I had some stuff, man, because that was in back yeah. there a little bit. And I wanted to always be different. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to, I never followed the same grave. I'm not saying it was the grave, right. I, I always went a different way with it. Just to be different, just to stand out. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. I'm curious, um, you know, of course, Tupac, what other circles was, like, going around when you was like, who oh else did you run into? Kwame, Chubb Rock. Oh, man. Uh, Tretch from Naughty by Nature. Oh, man. Um, Damn. Bro, they All was at the, the conference, house. bro? All at the conference. And that's just but me they was already on. and naming a few. But they was already on, right? They was already on. But it was celebrities. They were just like, Jack the Rapper would have these big conventions. You would have artists, uh, acts performing. We would have theatrical plays. It would be a whole weekend festival of, like, the entire music industry getting together. Damn, they need to bring that back. What, what, do, you think, back. what do you think happened? Bro, I actually got hit up by uh, Jack the Rapper's grandson. Oh, shit. They trying That's to bring deep, it back? man. Yeah, on social media. They trying to bring it back? He didn't say that. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he didn't say that, but that, that's a good idea, though, man. That's something like, with, I guess, you know what I'm saying, inspire him for all, all kind of uh, upcoming artists, right? Nah, for real. But, you know, with social media now, they... Nah, for real. Come on. Man, so you know, so you 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 were trying to rap, you know what I'm saying? Um, then you get into some trouble. You go to prison. What what was yeah, a lot of trouble. What <laughs> what was the scenario that sent you into prison? Uh, sent me to jail. Um, selling drugs, man. Selling them cookies. Selling them 
cookies, man. You, know what I'm you had the, Can't sell them cookies. So what now? You had the Zaza man. What you have? I was real. It was real. <laughs> AC straight. <laughs> <laughs> you sell the no cut. Man, keep it real. <laughs> so, I'm curious. Um, you know, because we hear a lot of stories where you would finally get caught up. Um, were you living the dream as you were doing it, or were you still kind of like day to day? I was living the dream as I was doing it. Because you got to think, I'm a young black male. I'm just trying to like, okay, I'm going to figure this out. I had my own dancers. I was paying for our outfits. I was paying oh. for everything. And this one, I was like already starting. Like the guy that got me involved with the Jack the Rapper, uh, he was running like little shows around Charlotte. We was doing um, all kind of talent shows and stuff oh, yeah. like that. I opened for Tracy Spencer, for Chub Rock. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, so you little time. You was yeah, I, I was still like, I was still right. selling them cookies. Yeah. But I was, you know what I'm saying? Still trying to, you know what I'm saying, get this rap thing. My big dream was like be this big rap star. We finna, get, you know what I'm saying, set this off. So, so now, I'm driving two planes, right? Flying two planes. So, you know so, man, you have an interesting story about how you got into the actual wrestling, man. I want you to tell it because it, when I listened to it, I was like, this is this is crazy. I was telling my girl about it. She was like, damn, that's a deep ass story. Yeah, like, it's kind of crazy. So, so I want to ask you. Uh, I want you to tell the story of how you even got to the point where you met the guy you met to get you into wrestling. He made me feel like a psych, like a, I mean, a psychologist. Like I, yeah, I yeah, for real, like that. Yeah, for real, talk about it. Talk about it. Mr. Killings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dog, it's crazy, man, because this is how it was. <clears throat> okay, I'm locked up. This, this time of my life, I'm really locked up. Yeah. Um, it's been doing some time. Yeah, now, you have, but what, what are you facing? Like, you facing uh, five, like ten? Like six years. Six, okay. But it got knocked down. At any like point, did you months? think about just telling on somebody like, man, <laughs> nigga, huh? we got to get the fuck out of here? Yeah, right? <laughs> so, uh, man, just uh, accumulation of charges, concealed weapon charges, I had two of them, um, drug charges. You were just all the way thugging, basically. Bruh, I was just like thugging. hitting that brick wall. Um, and I would be straight up honest with you, man. I was, I was doing what I remember one of my dudes, man, he was like, hey, bro, you can make, I saw him making money. I'm like, dude, you making your own money? So I was just doing that to pay for this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, Bro, the time I was locked up, uh, my sister brought all my pictures down. We talked about Jack the Rapper. Mm -hmm. So she brought down a stack of pictures of everything I went to, the people I met, everything. And the deputies, Carr and Monroe, they saw the pictures. And they was like, damn, dog, you don't belong in here. Man, you special. Look at your last name, Killings, dog. You, you, you supposed to be somebody. You supposed to be. So what we going to do? He said, you still do your music? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm still rapping, but I can't do the rap. He said, we need to find somebody that got some money to invest in you, and then you can become big with the rap, and we don't have to work in this motherfucker no more. So they was, that was the plan, dog. They would find somebody, look at some people's rap sheet, right. and find out who got money. They had guys in there for embellishment, blah, blah, blah. But we, we locked up, you know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. he's like, uh, we found somebody that got some money that invests in your music. He said, bro, we, we set, we on. Well, I think I was down to my last six months. He came to me, he said, uh, hey, you ever heard of Jack Crockett? And I'm like, nah. He said, well, he's been watching you, and he said, you got a nice physique, you got a nice build. I'm like, what the fuck? Why, why you, yeah. what you mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> but you got to think, though, like uh, when I was locked up, dog, I was like dancing for the inmates, man, telling jokes, stand-up comedy, shit, dancing, yeah. uh, doing crazy shit, working out. Um, so it was like me and him talked three times in there. And we sat down, we talked, and he said, I'm going to give you my phone number. Give me a call when you get out. The not mature me, I thought he wanted to give me a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. cut his grass or some shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I actually called him when I got out. He came and picked me up, dog, on the spot. Came and picked me up, took me out to eat, and this is when he first introduced professional wrestling to me. Right. And Harlem Heat had just came out. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to put me with Harlem Heat. And he had already sold WCW to Ted Turner. He was just a senior cameraman. He said, I never gave back before, and I want to give back. I said, he said, God told me to give back to you. Dog. Yeah, dog. So um, I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. I don't want to rouse. I said, I just want you to give me the money. And just, yeah. Go to my music. I remember him saying, man, nobody's going to give you, just give you money to go. He said, every rapper thinks they're a good rapper. Not saying that you're not great, but he said, when you're ready, give me a call. And dog, two years, two years later, more gun charges, more going back to jail, damn. done had kids, man. Like, so it was like, Damn, I know what it feels to be like that guy that, damn, what am I going to do with my life? Right. I yeah. want to do something with my life. Yeah. I see X, Y, and Z. I see, I see what's happening. I know what's happening. I want to do something. I called him. He came and picked me up. He said, this won't cost you nothing but time and dedication. He flew me to Atlanta, uh, took me to three WCW shows. And dog, he was sitting beside me. And he said, remember everything you was doing in jail when you was dancing for the inmates and rapping and telling you? I said, yeah. Ric Flair music hit. 
and that that ring up, bro, just lit up. Fire mm. everywhere. Energy was just there. He said, that could be you right there. That's right. He said, Damn. all the shit you were doing in jail, imagine if you was coming down the ramp right there. You're rapping and you're dancing. Your own music. You're rapping, you dance. You get in the ring. He said, remember you did that split in jail? I said, yeah. He said, you could do that split in the ring. Get up and fight. He pretty much Damn. gave me that. He put it in your head, like, just boom. He right put it in my head, dog. And um, he took me, dog, to a, to a spot in Charlotte. George Stein for Tiny Stein was working there. And, um, bro, it was like, I call it my ram in the bush. Because when I came into the wrestling business, started from the independents, I'm talking about getting paid hot dogs or $5, $10 to like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To where like people was willing to do and show me this. Hey, let me show you your arm bar. Let me show you your headlock. Let me show you your hip lock takeover. Let me show you this. Like everybody was willing to like just, everything was made before me, dog. You know what I'm saying? All that, he was right. It didn't cost me nothing but dedication. So yeah, um, a part of doing that, man, for like maybe four years, I went from learning how to set a ring up to managing, to wrestling, tag team, to being champion, to like this one entity, this, this wrestling is his own world, dog. Mm. They accepted me. Now this coming from the dude that was selling them cookies. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, no facts. I'm doing something different now. I'm, I'm like, and I'm loving it. it. It's like totally different than shit I'm used to, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And I'm able to wrap my own shit coming out. There you go, yeah, there you go. Base. Bro, a whole other fan base. And um, I think I did independence maybe for like four years. And some guys talked to me into doing a uh, tape and sending it to WWE at the time. And he, uh, Rick Michael's dad said, I'm going to make the tape for you. Just send it in. He said, I think you can go. You could be on television. You know, mm -hmm. you just send it in. And uh, he made this tape, man. I sent it in. And I got a call from Terry Taylor like two weeks later. And uh, two weeks after that, Vince McMahon flew me to Stanford. Man, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, right? I, I'm curious. You, were you a fan of wrestling prior at all in your lifetime? Before. Somewhat, yeah, yeah, somewhat. Yeah, I knew what Magnum TA, the Road Warriors. I, I used, okay. I remember going to school, bro. It's crazy. I used to go to school dressed like different characters and shit. I don't went to school dressed like Incredible Hulk. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't went to school dressed just, like just Bronco bro. Billy. Out of, bro, just out of like, I just woke up. <laughs> yes, man. And, and it was so crazy, man. Like I remember the principal would let me go tell jokes in the auditorium during lunchtime. And he did it, I think he did it for like maybe a month, but then they stopped doing it because everybody was coming there and wasn't going to the cafeteria. But it was just, um, it's crazy even back then, man, just yeah. knowing all this shit was, it's already, it's already it was already molding itself, right? That's crazy, bro, because like, you kind of got on during like the golden era of wrestling. Yes, you it know, was hot back then, right? It was like Attitude hot. Era. Yeah, it was hot, bro. And uh, I think they said you was like the first black person to win a WCW. First so. black NWA champion. That's crazy, bro. How did, that, how, how did that feel coming from where you come from to, to now, I'm sure some black kids are looking like, damn, I, there's a whole nother way out this mug and we ain't even consider wrestling. Man, it's, it's, it's unexplainable. I can't even find the words or the honor for that. You know, like um, I inspire. You know what I'm saying? Because I was inspired, you know what I'm saying? But that's something that I, I can't, and it took for me now maturing to see how it's opened doors for other blacks, for other, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Different nationalities, like, damn, I can do that shit too if he did it. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. We can come out the mud. Definitely. Yeah, nah. Nah, they can't, dog. I ain't gonna lie, to me, you know, you're the last great, you know, none against everyone who's wrestling now, but you're like the last great character of, uh, you know, our ethnicity that has really graced the WWE. That's just my personal opinion. Right. Now, I gotta ask you, um, to even go with Raw Truth or R-Truth, um, how did that name come about? I mean, is that, was that the first name you stuck with or this, were you did you go with any other names before that or that's the one that you said, okay, I'm gonna run with this? I had K-Quick before that. Okay. Well, actually, I had K-Crush, then K-Quick, and R-Truth came after uh, Raw and the Truth Killing. Okay. Um, Stephanie go. came up with that. She put, I remember we was in the uh, office and Vince wanted to keep the truth part to it. Yeah. And um, Stephanie wrote on a piece of paper, she wrote, and then she had all truth. She said, you like that? And just from the looks of it, I was like, damn, that's pretty cool. And Vince said, I like all truth. He said, what does the R stand for? <laughs> he always used that, so we came up with that like on the spot because they needed something to, I was debuting, and they had to have a name real quick right then and there. There you go. Now, uh, let's talk wrestling, man. Um, you know, uh, Professor, you've been doing this for how long, would you say? Uh, 
How many years would you put to it? Uh, oh, man. 20 something? It's a dub at least. Oh, right? man. Over a dub. Um, at least, right? Over. For, for what people may or may not know, who would you say uh, personally was your greatest rival during the, so far in your career? Like, whether you had fun with or just really you had a real rivalry with that person? Um, Cena. Okay. I was in Cena because a lot of the stuff that was hyped up wasn't true, kind of bled over to where people thought it was like really there. Um, Miz, he was an awesome <laughs> yeah, guy. Not that I love Miz, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dolph Ziggler. Oh yeah, Ziggler. Yes. R. Ziggler. Um, <laughs> I remember that. Remember that I remember guy? R. Ziggler. I remember <laughs> came, out, came out the doppelganger. <laughs> My stunt double. I remember that. I remember that. That was oh, shit. good times, good times. But definitely Ziggler. Um, uh, what, was, I know with Cena, he was also a rapper too. Um, yeah. So therefore, uh, I don't remember the, like just the, the back and forth y'all had, but was it ever, was it ever rap, rap? battle did y'all ever take it to rap never was a rap battle but uh a lot of people don't even know this uh, i have on my computer a song that me and cena did together oh, wow. but he came to my house he came to my house we went to my studio uh after a show in charlotte and we recorded this song called the jump off oh man and we never put it i never put it out we never did nothing with it damn damn yeah <laughs> so even the song even your uh, your intro song with the what's up um uh, was that something that when you made, you're like, I'm a, were you trying to make an intro song or were you just, you had a song that I'm gonna use as my intro? Man, I wrote that in my friend's trailer. You oh, know what I'm saying? I made that beat in my son's bedroom. Oh I man, out the mud. And it was, um, I think I was, you know, I'm human. I was at a point in my life where like, I done got fired from the biggest company in the world. I had done left WWB as K Quick. Mm. I was gone, that was my first time experiencing the feeling of failure mm. or just, you know what I'm saying? Like, and if you listen to the lyrics in What's Up, you hear what I'm talking about. And I wrote What's Up, man, with that mind frame, that vibe I had, that energy I had going on. Like, um, yeah, I'm down, but I ain't pinned down. I ain't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's just, you go back and listen to it. Now yeah, now definitely I'm gonna listen to it in a different aspect now. Yeah, yes, for real. Yes, and um, the hook just came with it, man. So you get a little bit, of the real, the real guy, yeah. then you get a little bit of the universal language. What's yeah. up? There you go. Um, coming in, did you ever uh, have thoughts of being either the heel or the baby face? I mean, from your, from your early on, you already seemed like a, a likable guy, you know, right. like from you know, doing funny stuff in school. Did you, did you ever want to come in? Some people come in as like, like what The Rock did. He came in as the, the heel. Best. To turn into the baby face and definitely yes, there. Like, right. what yeah, was your thoughts bro. as far as what you wanted, and even in that scenario? I did, and and Vince turned me heel one time, mm. and uh, that's where Little Jimmy came from. That's where me smoking in the arenas come from. Yeah, yeah. But he was paying twenty thousand dollar fines for me to smoke a cigarette in the arena. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this ain't the seventies, man. <laughs> but yeah, but it was like, um, yeah, today's prices ain't yesterday's prices, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, twenty five racks to smoke though. That's kind of crazy. Because you can't you can't smoke in the arenas. And he would let me light up and smoke. He's part of his heel storyline. But it was becoming such a, people love to hate me, that it was like, they're not hating you. They're loving you being a heel. Like, right, you could right. ram somebody's head into it, and they're not going to boo. They're going to cheer it. Like, so it was, he said, you can't be a, a heel. Can you see John Cena as a heel? It'll take some doing. It'll take some doing. He's such a fan favorite that such that, that appeal, like, Everybody loves truth, but we'd be a bad guy. It was almost like not feel right. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, I, as far as your character, um, you know, being, you know, because you have different folks in wrestling as far as some are silent, the quiet type, some are more zoned in as far as, you know, uh, cerebral. You more so bring a lighter side to the wrestling, which is what we always loved as kids growing up watching WWF. Uh, not so much a serious, you know, just men grappling, but the characters. You, you, you right. brought that in. Is that something that you know you just always wanted and you will always stick with as far as just like write me into something where it could be funny? It could be like let me do my thing. Or did you ever want to say I'm a draw back because you know I'm not feeling it tonight? Um, nah man, you gotta do it to it. <laughs> you gotta get to it. You gotta do it to it, dog. Yeah, yeah. I, um Bro, one thing I do know is funny, man. It's like uh, it's crazy sometimes we do stuff and 
Vince will give a side note to say, don't nobody else try to be funny but true. <laughs> like, so it's like, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm a guy, I can find something funny in everything, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, we all can find humor in stuff, dog. It's always going to be a bad thought and shit, right? So. Do you ever think you did a uh, skit that just crossed the line or went too far? Uh, no. <laughs> what was your favorite skit that you ever did? Oh my gosh, man. Um, probably the 24-7 uh, stuff in um, who was going to Abu Dhabi. We were going to, no, we were going to Saudi. Mm. Me getting in inside the um, airplane cabin that um, we was doing stuff, dog, on the tarmac in That's a different crazy. country, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's crazy. We was asking, hey, can we um, do a little wrestling thing? I was like, oh, shit, come, do it, do it, <laughs> Dad. Do what you want to do, yeah. But it was cool, man. It was like experiencing that while doing it makes it uh, one of my favorite moments, man. Um, who was like almost breaking the barriers on doing stuff. No, who couldn't top that? Man, who, who would you say is the best um, when it comes to uh, promoting a match? Who would you say was the best at it, from just your history of knowing whoever did it? What you mean as far as? Just promoting a match, um, just, you know, uh, on the microphone, uh, prior to the match, setting uh, up a match. I got to get to Michael Cole, man. Michael Cole, shout out Michael Cole, definitely. Right? <laughs> definitely. Jerry Lawler? Oh, Lawler. Oh. I forgot about Lawler. I think it was, uh, it was Farouk who, uh, I think he was like, uh, he said some. Uh, I'm a, I'm some nigga. Uh, well, it, no, it was the uh, Booker. Yeah, yeah, it was Booker. Booker said. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is classic to this day. He said Booker. nigga. Yeah. He caught himself. He caught himself like, at the but end. But he got it out though. Yes. He got it out. Yes. Yes. I'm like, how, I how, remember that. Yes. How often when is because is it is it taped or is it live when you, when it's like a Monday Night Raw or oh, that's live. It's live. So yes. how much room for error do y'all like like? Fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. Damn. That's it. That's tough, man. So if you cuss, they don't catch you right then and there. They got 15 seconds to find that shit. Ooh. Um, I would say when it comes to uh, outside of your rivalries, what would you say was one of your greatest matches that you just said, man, this was a technical match. It was the outcome was great. The fans went crazy. Um, oh, man. Um, any matches I had with Sheldon Benjamin was like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. Me and Shelton jailed real good together. Me and Dolph did. Um, yeah. The Miz. Miz don't get a lot of credit for he should, though. Miz is very good in the ring. It took me a long time to give credit because, you know, I love the real world. The, yeah, the character. I, I just I yeah. love watching that and I road rules and shit. And then when he took, it took me a long time to take him serious. <laughs> and I know he probably, he probably hates that. Yeah. But it does because people know you for one thing and you passionate about one thing, like you said, dedication and things of that nature. But it does take a while to... To accept, to just accept, it. yeah. yeah to say you are. <laughs> yes, bro, and that's Miz, dog. In a nutshell, that is Miz, man. He is good at what he do. Yep. Yep. Now, there's a documentary out right now called Dark Side of the Ring on Viceland. I don't okay. know if you've seen it, right? And they're showing a bunch of characters, right, that wrestled, but just did some crazy wild shit, right? So one of the wrestlers, literally, they try to pick him up. He pulled out a knife and just stabbed somebody, like. New Jack. New Jack. Stabbed somebody 14 times. What's the wildest thing that you've ever heard that happened in the ring? New Jack. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. New crazy. Jack. Yeah, New Jack, dog. He brought a whole different element. Like, this nigga did what? He stabbed him how many? With, Bray was a match. Nah. Man. Bro, he, jumped, he jumped off stage and kept stabbing him. I'm like, man. Dog, there was a wrestler named Gypsy Joe. Gypsy Joe was is old, dog. He's, yeah. he's an older guy. And uh, I asked him, I said, Jack, why did you do the Gypsy Joe, dog? He was, at that time, G Gypsy Joe was like 70 years old. Mm. Shouldn't have been in the ring. Or like that. No, no, he might be 60. Okay. He still shouldn't have been in the ring. But he stiffed Jack a couple of times. And you can go and Google it, dog. Yep. Like, Jack like really, literally whipped the wheels off his ass, dog. He put the ball on right? <laughs> Didn't he hit the mother with a toaster? Yeah, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> he cracked that shit with a toaster, right? Man. It's crazy because, you know, these hardcore matches, man, um, and even outside of WWE, I mean, I've seen some hardcore matches uh, from other wrestling entities. I'm like, man, I, like, how far can wrestling take it for it to be, like, we can't put this on TV. Yeah, dog, but some stuff just don't make sense. It don't. I mean. You, you, I think those are, like, the guys who do the hardcore, hardcore, 
They just want to do something. I ain't gonna lie. It's not want to be a wrestler. Yeah. Because we're not doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just want to do something. How much credit do you give Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon? I remember Shane McMahon jumped off whatever the fuck it oh, was. Man. I'm like, oh, I know the Shane McMahon. You're the money. And you're risking your life he for the entertainment. Him and his dad. Him and his dad. They um they are true to the game as we live by example. Man. Like Vince still. St still. Vince will take a, a, a fall. Vince will do anything right now in the ring. That's crazy. And that's just Shane, he's looking for the next moment to do the biggest jump and top what he just did. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now I gotta ask you this. And um where do you think wrestling is going now? You know what I'm saying? Like I I don't see as much fanfare amongst the kids as I used to see when gr growing up. Everybody I knew was like a wrestling fan, you know? But where do you see it going now? You know what I'm saying? And how do you think it can reach back and grab some more youth? I think it was getting there. Um, the world had to transition and change when COVID happened. Yes, that's You feel right. what I'm saying? And from us going from that explicit type to like we brought the PG in there, we made it more of a family show. I'm, I'm, I'm largely recognized when I'm in the stores and a parent come to me and said, my, my son says you're a wrestler, you're on television, you do this wrestling thing. And I, a lot of people know me because they're their kids. Yeah. So, so it is working, we are reaching, but they want to like reach the, the household, right. not just the grown ups. We want to reach the whole because little, little Jimmy gonna get you to go buy what he wants. There you go. You gonna buy there that for go. little Jimmy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think, once this pandemic thing settles down or whatever, I think wrestling is, is gonna go to the next level. You have a lot more um, guys in there, uh, some of my favorites, man, like uh, Damian Priest, Finn Balor, um, Sasha, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't think they've had their chance to like really blossom yet. And you know, I'm not gonna lie to you, uh, and this is just my personal opinion, cause you know, cause I'm a fan from back in the, uh, you know, before the Attitude Era, the, you know, the, the Undertaker first came and stuff like that. I miss the characters. Um, I miss, uh, you know, now wrestlers will go by their their, their name, like their right. real name. And I miss the character of like not knowing who he was personally. He's not going oh, by really? his name. I, I miss that. I miss the costumes. I miss the, uh, I love the gimmicks as far as where they come out to, but I do miss them coming out as, you know, uh, um, uh, like a Mick Foley would have three different entities. <laughs> Uh, Cactus Jack, you know, right? And mankind. then you might one day hear his real name, like, "Oh, that's his real name." So I missed that, and I wish you really? could get back to those character-driven days because, you know, who loves who don't love a good character? You know, people. Okay, so I you always know, look at wrestling as superheroes, you know, like. But I never knew, you know, I'd rather see Superman and Clark Kent wrestle, you know, if if that makes sense. If right. that makes sense. <laughs> okay, okay, I got you. I see, I see that. But I do want to ask you your stance as far as um how far women wrestling has come. Uh, since, oh my gosh. Yeah, like how far have things has come with them? They've made stumping grounds. Um, even going over to, to a different country. Yeah, man. And putting on a show. I've been there uh, with WWE where like none of, none of the female wrestlers could go because they weren't allowed to, you know what I'm saying? And th they've made so many grounds, man. Natty Nightheart, another great one, man, that's been in the business that have excelled, man, and just made this business and sport, man. Bianca Blair coming up. <laughs> right, right? It's, um, they're, they're, they're making great grounds, but I think, man, like when you was asking me where I think wrestling is going, I think they're gonna be the ones to take it there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I gotta ask, um, celebrities, are they good or bad for the sport? Because you see people like Snoop Dogg come in and <laughs> Freddie Gibbs, like, you know, you'll just start seeing people come in and win matches, you know, there's like, is that a good or bad thing for the sport, do you think? Um, don't make me none. You know what I'm saying? I think it's a, um, I don't see it as a bad thing at all. I see it as uh, two brands crossing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, give me a little bit of your arms, I'll give you a little bit of mine. I see, I see it as dipping and dabbing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't see nothing wrong with that at all. But you used to see situations like where Mike Tyson comes in, right? Yeah. Uh, with DX or, you know, and it's like, you, Everybody Mike was, Tyson could, you, you look like Mike Tyson, and you want to see Mike Tyson in a match. Yeah. It could be something. You see a Floyd Mayweather come in against the big show, and you're like, I want to see it, but it's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's, kind of, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, but you want to see him get hey, punched, though. You for see sure. Get, no, facts. <laughs> for sure. Then you have, uh, you know, of course, Snoop Dogg. You got Johnny Knoxville, WrestleMania. Yeah, yes. Um, when it gets to that level to where Johnny Knoxville's taking it serious. I mean, you know, he's taking it serious. Yes. So um, he's going to give his all. But when you see, like, I don't know if this match 
quite make sense for this guy to go against a wrestler. Yeah, we want to see what happens. We got to see what happens. We got to see what happens on that one. <laughs> like I said, man, the, the cross brands, I'm down with that. Definitely. I like that. You know what I'm saying? I think it just get more eyes on the product. Right? That, yeah, no, that's a good, good point. Move. That's a good point. Yeah, it, 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 don't, it really kind of makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It makes sense. It makes sense. The, the tight knit wrestling community, they get it. Right, right, right. Now, they said, and, and you got a document. I don't know if you know that. You got like a YouTube documentary on you. <laughs> a YouTube documentary? Yeah, somebody, there's a YouTube doc on you, man. <laughs> what you mean? Is it the WWE 24 or no, something different? No, it's like some fan made documentary, I think. Yeah, it's, it's dope. It's dope as shit, though. they talking about me selling them cookies. Yeah, that's yeah. They talked about talked about it, but they but but this is what they said. They said you're a 45 time belt holder, and I was like, damn, nigga, that's a lot. I was like, is that true? No, actually, it's more. Damn, 53. Well, if you count the 53 times I won the 24 seven championship, uh, two times I won the U.S. title and the tag titles. Is that, is that a record? Like oh, I am the. Uh, I've had more title reigns. I've, I've held like than anybody in WWE history. That's crazy. That's yeah. what's up. That's Come on, man. You wanna, That's I won representation. That I won that twenty four seven title fifty three times. I know you're Mister twenty four seven. I mean, it's just, without, hey, but the thing actually is, do you know Forbes magazine did a write up about it? Are you serious? No, I did not know. Google uh, r Truth twenty four seven title. And see what come up. See what come up. I will do. Um, and it brings me to curiosity as far as um, I look at like when Goldberg did his streak, you know, and it's like he's undefeated, 151 to 0. How often do wrestlers wrestle? For those who don't know, how often do wrestlers wrestle outside of like SmackDown, uh, Monday Night Raw? Like, how often do y'all wrestle throughout the week? Oh, uh, four nights a week. Four nights a week. Yeah. Um, most of it's not televised. Except most not televised. It's nope. just really for the fans in that city. Yes. Man. Um, do we miss things in those matches that should be yeah, yeah. televised? Yeah, those are a lot more. Uh, we get to really like sprawl out and have fun. Yeah. We get to really like make the fans, you know what I'm saying, get what they're paying for. We get to really like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We get to really have fun. Man, what is one of your favorite WrestleMania moments uh, in the history of WrestleMania? Oh. Roman. Okay, okay. I mean, any, any moments, man, with WrestleMania with Roman Reigns involved in it. Oh, yeah. Me knowing from where he come from. Yeah. And what pretty much was set and grave for him and him accomplish him and um, him being one. Well, I also like Brock beating Taker, too, so what? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. That, was, that was crazy, right? No, that was crazy, man. That's why I'm like, this Brock I can't versus Roman that is. One. I can't forget that one. Yeah. But. Um, that probably be my top one. Um, how excited are you for this uh, Brock versus uh, Roman coming up, man? Mm. As far as just for the for the business, for the fans. I don't know. I wonder how many um, suplex we gonna see. <laughs> no, that's fact. That's Sioux facts. Sioux Falls City. Sioux Falls City, man. What is one of your favorite? Uh, what is your favorite finisher? Your personal favorite finisher, and then one that maybe another wrestler did, or you know, call, you know, whatever you know they added to. Oh, it. that's stunner. Well, yeah, Stone right, Cold Stunner, man. I mean, it was everybody like, like that. Every yeah, come man. on, man. When you see Vince McMahon get stunned, he could sell it so well. It's just yeah. Like, God. <laughs> RKO. The RKO, yeah. definitely, definitely. That's one of the good ones. Uh, figure four. Oh, oh yeah. Come on, figure four. Leg lock. Come on, man. Yeah. Um, what do you What do you feel is one of the most dangerous finishing moves that, like, folks really shouldn't want to see? Oh, Tombstone. Oh yeah, the power driver. Um, Power drive, they outlawed that. Yeah, there was a wrestler who recently broke his neck. I forget his, uh, what's his name? Um, a wrestler recently broke his neck, uh, I think getting uh, tombstone or power drived. Uh, right, power drive. Yeah, which you, if you land it wrong, you know, and it's crazy because when he broke his neck, which I think even Stone Cold broke his neck yeah. one time. Yeah. And it's like you still got to. That like, way it started. Yeah, it's like, it's, man, it's like, I don't know how when you come to an injury in the ring, you still want to sell the fight to at least get it to a finish. Um, but it seems like it's like with a broken neck and no, you can't, man, you can't finish it, dog. <laughs> you want to? I mean, my uh, tore my patella tendon mid stride running. Ah, yeah, and I couldn't. I wanted to finish, but I couldn't. Every time I would get up, I would collapse. 
My leg was done. So was it doing like the troop acts? Or? Huh? Was it doing your move or just, just running in general? Running, just running in general. Oh, damn. So yeah. Like no moves, dog. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so in the ring, do y'all just got to like add, like add lib at that point? Like, hey, y'all don't tap me out? Yes. Oh, yes. That's you crazy. have to wing that shit. That's crazy, man. So, man, like, as far as when you were doing all the wrestling, at, at any point did you feel like, I have this notoriety now, let me go ahead and push the button on the music? <laughs> um, no, man, this music never was forgotten. All the way back to the Jack the Rapper days, to uh, this music was gonna surface sooner or later. You, and I just figured, man, like the universe has its time for everything, you know what I'm saying? You weren't in the studio, like just, you know, random studios in the cities? Nah, man, I had a studio in my crib. And when I met Jay Trax, dog, I just planted there. Okay. I wouldn't go on the wells, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a very picky person, dog. As right. cool and, and fun and energetic as people like me, this and that, man, I keep a small, knit, close circle. I don't fuck with a lot of people. I just, you know what I'm saying? Stay amazing with my family, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But uh, after I met Jay Trax, dog, it was like, damn, this is what I need. This is the missing link that I needed in my puzzle. That's what's up. Shout out the team real quick. So who all are you working with as far as doing your music, your videos, and everything that a rapper got to do? You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, the whole RK18, man. j Tracks right there. Um, my DJ, Prison. Prison, you up? Shut up. <laughs> he look like a DJ, too. <laughs> uh, I, I, shout, shout out my wife over there supporting me. Yeah. My dog, Jane Worthy, right there. Yeah. Hold it down for me. Yeah. Uh, got a big team, man. Um, a lot of Ron Killing, AKR, true supporters, man. Everybody wants to see me win. When I win, my team win. Is it different now? Like, music has changed so much since, you know, that you probably put out your other project to where now you can really skip the label, the middleman. You can literally use the, the platform to help with your sales and all that. Does that make you want to do music more? Like, damn, I can um, really. You kind of answered all them questions, dog. I'm known worldwide. Yeah. And the new Jack the Rapper now is the internet. No facts. Bruh, so it's just, I mean, Europe loves me. There's nowhere you can't go where nobody know me at. No, big facts. Big facts is. So just turning all those wrestling fans into rap fans. Right, right, right. Yeah. I want my, my favorite rapper is my favorite wrestler. My favorite wrestler is my favorite rapper. And that's why I was trying to tell another artist. I'm like, um, you know, you could build a brand outside of music. Um, if you, you know, whether wrestling or whatever you're doing, but right. you can still make music if that's one of your passions and to where, if you have a brand, people will gravitate towards whatever you do because you have yes. fans, real fans. Man. Real fans, dog. Uh, religious fans, okay. cult followers, just oh. like, dog, we fuck with you. Like, nah, you know real. what I'm saying? Those type that'll make you. Have you ever uh, bought one of your own toys and just set up? I did. The first one I had, I did. Yeah, that's real. I went <laughs> to that motherfucker right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me buy this. $10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did do it, dog. It was like, and it was surreal to me because it was like, Coming from stealing them cookies. Yeah, stealing the cookies. I got a. You know what I'm, I'm in Walmart. <laughs> yeah, dog. <laughs> Bro, I'm in, I'm in stores, man. And it's like family member people calling me like, dog, got your motherfucking action figure right here. Like, it was like, oh, damn. Or to see myself in, the first, in my first video game I was in. Yeah, nah, for real. I had to go to the place and make it because yeah. they want me to rap down to the ring. I had to do all that, get dressed up in the suit, the whole oh, nine. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, man. So it was like, Cool ass experience, man. Hell of a ride. You know what I'm saying? yourself when you're playing like a WWE game? Do you like, I'm gonna just put. Yes, I will. <laughs> even oh, though, even though people. they got my damn power rings down. Yeah, yeah dog. Yeah. My son called me from college, dog. He said, Dad, they did you dirty, man. They, they got your <laughs> shit down. Yeah. Yeah, he still playing with you, though, man, but they got your shit down. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, I, I wanna ask you, man, like, now that you're back in the music game, right? Give us, like, for the people watching this, because we are a music platform, what are some songs that they could be looking out for when you drop that album, and when is the album coming out? Oh, the album's out. Oh, the album's the already EP out. is out, yes. Oh, okay, what is the name of the EP? Legacy. Legacy. Legacy, okay. the EP, you know, I had to say, uh, the drop. It's actually funny, we put out the EP, which is called Legacy, uh -huh. and we have a song off the EP called Legacy. Mm. So it's just intertwining, man. There's, and I think it's a vibe, man, for every ear. You know what I'm saying? There you, go. you can listen to this shit in the house, in the car, on the plane, Facts. airports, cookouts. There you go. Right after you leave Bible study. You can, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Selling yeah, them yeah. cookies. If, 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 if you yeah. out there selling them cookies, <laughs> legal, legally, then. Legal crazy. cookies, how, yeah. How crazy has the world come to where <clears throat> they legalize like marijuana now? That's uh, good. And, and like, 
That's good. Who probably is still have them sitting down from selling it illegally right. a couple that's years prior. Wow, bro. Right? That's crazy when you think about that it. That is man. crazy, man. That's that's a deep hole. But we'd have a whole different That's subject, a whole bro. that's a whole we have a whole so, bigger long interview on that right, one, right? For real, for real. Yeah. Um, how is it performing uh when you rap compared to performing when you wrestle? Like what's the difference in adrenaline? Do you get nervous in either the two uh when it comes to you know going up there in front of fans? Nah, I'll be ready. There you go. I'll be ready so I don't have to get ready. There you go, <laughs> not for real. Yeah, man. Ready. Yes. Nah, I mean, you, you always have that that butterfly. I remember my coach used to tell us, man, he said it's gonna either make you hard or burn you up, one or the other. There's no no way in between. There you, you go. You gotta control that energy. There you go. Now you, um, of course, you brought your support. You, uh, as you said, you have your wife here. Um, when I look at uh, <coughs> wrestlers who are, you know, in a relationship while wrestling, or either have someone sitting at home, how hard is it to manage when you're on the road that long away from family, uh, your kids, oh, and things man. of that nature? It takes, it takes a special family. Yeah. Um, the wife not having a husband there, doing pretty much handling the house, right. yeah. but keeping that shit locked down and, mo and, and moving, mm -hmm. taking the kids to their acting, their dances, their um, piano and guitar lessons. But my right. kids are like, they're motivated to do things too. Uh, me missing certain occasions with them. I've missed a lot of birthdays. I've missed a lot of, so it's a lot of things that you have to have a certain woman and kids that pretty much accept what you're doing and, and know the sacrifice. It's like, if I'm out with my kids now, and I got five, if I'm out with them now and somebody's like, hey, Art, you gotta take a picture, I'm sorry with your family. They're like, oh, no, no problem. They're used to it. They, that's my dad, they're, they're used to that, man. And it's, um, it's very demanding, man, trying to wear all those hats. Yeah. So you got the right special family that know the hats you have to wear to take care of this and that. Yeah. They push you with that shit. They Definitely. push you with it, man. They they accommodate you with it. Hey, babe, you need don't you try to do some music? Don't you just that? Hey, dad, you need to post this, blah blah blah, this and that. Like my family, like they support me big time, which encourages me. Yeah. But uh, oh, it's hard with my daughter. Like said, I don't want you to go. I was that. I said, babe, if I don't go, I can't buy you this. I can't do that for you. Yeah, I heard somebody I want you to say a man at home all the time can't be doing too much. You know right. what I'm saying? Like right. um, so I have to go make shit happen for us to be all right. And I think technology has made it easier compared to back in the 90s and 2000s where you didn't have the technology, the technology to see the kids and see right. what's going on. And that would that make, makes it a little easier. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it makes, makes it the world easier, easy, man. Definitely. Hella easy now. Definitely. Definitely. Back then, you had what? Shit. Pigeons, right? Pigeons, yeah. Like, you send me a card. Yeah. <laughs> send a pigeon. Send a raven. Send a raven. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Um, man, uh. I want your thoughts on, uh, you know, I want you to grade uh, Will Smith's <coughs> slap oh. on, uh, on uh, Chris Rock, man. I want you to grade it from a kayfabe, from, I, I want you to grade it from how real or how fake it looked, just from you experiencing and knowing how a slap could be real or either imposed. What are your thoughts? Do you think it was real? Uh, yes. A real altercation, I think it was real. I think it was real, yes. It wasn't scripted. Uh, you said what? You don't think it was scripted? All right, so, so, so. I, at the moment, I thought it was real, but as the days have went on, I'm like, man, it looks, it looks so, like, the, it looks scripted. It looks. The Oscars was in trouble. They needed it, something big, right? Yeah. I'm just giving you a scenario. No, yeah. The Oscars was thinking they needed something big. I think Chris, everybody hates Chris coming out with a new series or something yeah, coming he out. Yeah, he's on tour. And Will got some new stuff, like, um, he's working. That was talked about more than anything. You can look at that as that side point. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's real and non scripted, damn. Uh, I mean, do you, okay? Because I don't know if anybody wants a manhood challenge like that, bro. I ain't gonna You lie. gotta do something, right? You like, have to, bro. bro. I, think, I think Chris Rock has done well for himself to where, like, if some furniture get moving on this motherfucking stage, I'm okay. Right? Yeah, like, I yeah. Can't lie. And, and a lot of my friends at work are like, oh, no, nah, but dog, that's the Oscars. You're at the Oscars. No, nah, this my, is this, this my statue. This yeah, my... Kids watch. Yeah, I got slapped. I my, family my family is watching this shit. Like, I just don't know too many people who get slapped and don't respond like, immediately without thinking. Like, to have well, that much restraint. Was well, that a smart move, though? 
because it was the Oscars. Uh, not Will Adams. As, as a man. So listen. So, li a, listen, uh, so you had you had your you had your 50th birthday. Right. Will Smith is 51. Right. Chris Rock, I believe, is 51, 52. 51. So they're 51. They're all the same age. <coughs> I know you're in great shape. Right. But do you feel Chris Rock would have would have been would it have been good for him to have got slapped and then attack Will and no. been laying on the floor? No. I mean, that's he, like a worse scenario. He did me, right? the right thing and not hitting Will back. Yeah, like Will and I've seen Chris. Chris is small, man. Chris is yeah. small dude. Yeah, Will like Will train for Ali, like. Cause you saw me through the slap. He yeah, had he, hands. And he, he, kind of parried. he, was, he yeah. was waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. So I'm like, bring it. But to turn his back on a man and just walk off, I'm like, that's. Cause he knew he wasn't gonna do nothing. <laughs> I know you ain't gonna do All right, shit. Man, that's man. <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, how out of line was Will, man? Huh? On a scale of one to ten, how out of line was Will, man? All right, I'm gonna give you a different scenario. He made a joke about his wife that suffered from a condition that she has no control right. over. That he, that he just right, right, right. They've been going through personal shit. Yeah. There's a lot of, she had an entanglement. He, he's been embarrassed, humiliated big time. Everybody's like, he had a lot of shit built up in him and you're gonna make a joke about the mother of my kids on national television. Yeah. No, I get it. I think we all get it. <laughs> Nigga, you opened the mother. We, we not, <laughs> we not really tripping on Will. We tripping on Chris Rock. Like, not doing nothing. Yeah, like that. Ain't gonna do nothing. Nothing. Do you think it was a smart move not to do nothing? Me? Yes. Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> the, the picture of Chris Rock laying on the Oscar floor, knocked out. Cause he would have got beat up. Yeah, he would have beat up. He would have got. I beat would up. not have wanted to see that right. for that man. He didn't want none of that. I didn't. I would rather take it on chin and we could laugh it off. Cause he I'm a comedian like, at the end of the day. No. <laughs> now who I'm mad at is yeah. I really want to see Jada coming to Will Smith's defense. I, I I don't see her like I don't see her tweeting. I, she's quiet right now, but she should have ran up to him and like hugged yeah, him. Yeah, like grabbed him, picked him up, and walked Game with him. Game of Thrones movie, yeah. <laughs> nah, bro. She was like a great Game of Thrones queen. She yeah, like, man, she but like, yeah. Dragon, she got an ice box dog. Uh -oh. <laughs> what it used to be. <laughs> oh no, man! I think he asked. For, I mean, I think he he poked the bear, dog. <laughs> yeah. He poked the bear. We'll be going through some shit, dog. Yeah. Like, don't put me on, on front street, man. Ah oh, man, it's my wife. Ah oh, man, it's time. Yeah, they he all, had they to go all. home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I, I know Chris Rock brother there. It's, ah, it's just I know it's tough. I know it's tough. They didn't Both. do nothing either, did they? He, they didn't do nothing either. I'm like, no one. I didn't hear no altercation in the parking lot. Afterward, but they said we was in the uh, <laughs> yeah, dancing dance, away. Like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> Get jiggy with it, man. Yeah, man, I don't know. I, this this got to be Hollywood. Be he slapped jiggy him with. and then won an award, bro. <laughs> he got an award for the slap, didn't he? No, but <laughs> shit, might as well. Bro went up there and accepted the award at the now. Will a bad man. Man, Truth, I gotta ask you, um, how excited are you for uh, you know, they brought the WrestleMania back to Dallas, man, uh, you know, Jerry Jones Stadium, AT and T Stadium. You yeah, know, he was able to bring it back. I think they uh they're doing it two nights uh this year, Saturday and Sunday for uh, right. first time. First time ever. They said yeah, this is so big from what happened last time in uh Florida that they're like, let's break it up into two nights. They um, did that in Florida, right? Yeah. So Florida they, they sold out, so they're like we have to give it more. We have, the audience needs more. Needs more. So I'm like, it's interesting to see it going down two nights in a row. Um, uh, I don't even know who's which main events are going on when, but how do you feel about that progression as far as what they're doing WrestleMania for this year? Man, I think it's gonna be something that's gonna be captivating, dog. Um, and, and if you're following the storylines of all the uh, the talent, man, I think Saturday's gonna lead right into the Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And. I'm excited about it, man, to see. I, I'm, I, I get excited seeing everybody else get excited. Yes. That's where I'm at now. Yes. Are they doing, uh, they're doing uh, the Hall of Fame? Uh, they're doing it this year? Yes, Hall of Fame. They, they are doing the Hall of Fame. Okay. They canceled the fan access, but they, uh, last minute they said it's going to keep Hall of Fame. Um, as far as uh, Scott Hall, um, you know, oh, recipe Scott Hall, um, how was that? Like, how was the, the uh, for you, as far as you know, seeing the brotherhood of you know the rest of the community come together for whenever y'all lose one of y'all own. That's good. Um, it's a good thing, dog. And um, and that's what it's like—a brotherhood. Yeah. We're um, we're on the road, dog. We see each other sometimes more than we see our families. Yeah. We're um, we're all making sacrifices together. We're all like missing flights, staying in airports, 
sometimes standing shitty room. We're, we're all like going through the ringer together. So it's like a, a brotherhood type thing, man. And yeah, um, when weird. we lose one, we feel like, oh shit, we lost a link. And Scott Hall, man, he, he spoke up, he stood up for me big time, man, when I was at um, TNA. Yeah, man. Um, love Scott. Yeah, man. Ah, Razor Ramon. Um, man, there you go, man. As far as uh, for those that do want to, uh, either if you have any shows coming up, uh, of course, the album out. Uh, tell them how to follow you, how to get the music. Also, um, you know, uh, what you have coming up, just kind of what's going on with you. Come um, on. Trying to get more of these concerts out, man. Yeah. Uh, you can go follow me on my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Well, I'm on the TikTok. Um, all my social media sites, Ron Killings One. Uh, Facebook, the same thing, Ron Killings One. Um, other than the Legacy EP, um, we're working on another album. Okay. Uh, I got enough, enough, enough songs, man. We're actually going to drop. Next thing we're gonna drop is a country song. I would love to see the country or wrong country killing song. song. I would love to, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. You, you might, hey, if you could get Cena to clear the song, uh, that, the, uh, the, what's it called, jump, jump off. Yeah, jump, if you could get it to clear, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, <laughs> throw it on that deluxe album, for real, man. Make it some, man, make it an event. Shout out to you, you got a show tomorrow. Yeah, definitely, man, yeah, shout yeah. out to the show tomorrow for those that need to apply. Um, um, any shout outs you wanna give? Uh, Shout out to y'all, dog, for having me here, man. Man, love, man. Nah, we're fans. Dog. We're fans. Shout out to my team, man, and uh, shout out to Dallas, Texas. Y'all hey. getting this shit first. Hey. There you go. There you go. Well, you already know what it is, man. What's up? Ooh. Raw Truth, Raw Killings in the building, man. You already know what it is, man. WrestleMania this week. Hey, man, you sitting on this couch, man. You are a real-life street star. We salute. Appreciate it. Boom. Shout out to real street stars, nigga. Moolah.